my name is Rachel Slocum, and this is my project ALP2 for Math 172. So first we'll start with objective number one, which asks us to use trigonometric identities to simplify the trigonometric expression. And I chose the problem from ck12.org cosine 2x minus 3 sine squared x. And the first thing I did was expand the problem using one of the double angle identities, which I got off the chart from the right, which was from onlinemathlearning.com. So my problem now looks like cosine squared x minus sine squared x minus 3 sine squared x. And after that, I collected the like terms, and that got me cosine squared x minus 4 sine squared x. And that is my answer for this problem. So the next objective we're going to touch on is asking us to determine the magnitude and direction angle for the vector in component form, as well as determine component form for the vector given its magnitude and direction. So basically the example I created was where x equaled 6 and y equaled 8. So what I did was plug these values into the equation v equals square root of x squared plus y squared, which is a form of the Pythagorean theorem in terms of vectors. And from plugging these values, I got the magnitude of 10. And to find the direction angle, I applied theta equals 10 inverse minus 1 times y over x. And from plugging in those values to that equation, you get the direction angle, angle which is 53 degrees. And next, they want us to find the component form. So what I did was sketch a little triangle to the right. That's my drawing. And I got the x component by doing 8 cosine of 53, and that's 4.4, and the y component is 8 sine 53, which is 6.4, meaning our answer for component form is 4.4i plus 6.4j. Now we are on to objective number 6, which asks us to use Heron's form formula to determine the area of an oblique triangle, and then use two sides and the included angle of the triangle to determine the area of the oblique triangle. And before I show my example, I just wanted to mention that the formula is A equals, or area equals one half side A times side C times sine of angle B. And to use the formula, we need to find that angle B. And I use law of cosines. And now in case it's a little hard to see, side A equals 18, side B equals 24, and side C equals 21. So here's where we put that law of cosines to work. So we've got 24 squared equals 18 squared plus 21 squared minus 2 times 18 times 21 cos b. Whew. Well, that's all our sides. And then when you work it out through the calculator, which I recorded as such, I got that b equals 104.5 with that beautiful cos inverse. That's always my favorite part. And then we use that side b. Now that we have our side B, we could plug it into Heron's formula to get area of 183. Now we're on to objective 7, which tasks us to solve an application problem using the law of cosines. So my triangle, where I want to find side C, has a side where B equals 7.4. We don't know B, sorry, we don't know C, but we do know C's angle is 58, and side A equals 6.5. And for this triangle, I chose to use the law of cosines to find our side C. So basically, I plugged in everything but C squared into the law of cosines, which got me C squared equals 6.5 squared plus 7.4 squared minus, got minus 2 times 6.5 times 7.4 times cosine of 58. So you pop all that side into the calculator and square root it because you've got C squared and you get that side C equals 6.78 and the reference is to the right. And lastly, I did objective number nine, and I called it part one because it asked me to do two different things. The first one is to convert an equation in rectangular form to polar form. So the equation I created was 4x minus 3y equals two. And just recall that x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. So we get 4r cosine of theta minus 3r sine theta equals 2. And then I factored out the r. And factoring out the r got me r4 cosine of theta minus 3 cosine, or 3 sine theta equals 2. 
And since that's all one item now, and by one item I mean all under one parentheses with R singled out, you can divide it to the right and get your answer. And now last but not least, we do part two of objective nine, which is vice versa essentially of part one, where we take the polar form and convert it to rectangular form. And the problem I created was R equals cosine of theta. So first, I took the r and multiplied it by both sides, giving us r squared equals 8r cosine of theta. And we know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, so that let me write out the left side to x squared plus y squared equals 8r cosine of theta. And I also wanted to note, I was just writing down all my little thoughts, that r cosine of theta equals x, so I can replace the right with x squared plus y squared equals 8x, so now we have all the correct terminology. So x squared minus 8x plus y squared equals 0 because I subtracted the 8x over to let us have that 0. And seeing that all that is set to 0, I know now I can complete the square. So x squared minus 8x plus 8 plus y squared equals 8 will get you the answer of negative x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 8. And that's all.